So this session is basically going to be like an interview. Um, Brother Sire here will be interviewing me or asking me, um, you know, questions on whatever he feels, you know, my audience or rather um, society may benefit from or, you know, um, my followers may benefit from. Also, this could be looked at you know, like spirit talk, right, enhancing people's um, psyche or spirituality or rather even um, knowledge. So I'm honored to take another avenue on my platform, and I'm thankful for you, my beloved brother, my Scorpio King. Peace, peace, peace. Yes, that, you know, he's basically going to, um, you know, enhance this or rather navigate this for you all because, you know, this is what uh, we do, right? Yes, this is what we do. Okay, this is what we do. <laughs> so go ahead, beloved. Okay. What are the questions that you have so for me? We're basically going to get into crystals. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about crystals. Okay. I'm going to ask you a series of questions about crystals. Mm -hmm. To start out, you know, there's a lot of um, crystal information. People have different perspectives on crystals. Mm -hmm. According to your perspective, what is a crystal to me? What is a crystal to me? Hmm. I'm going to start channeling this information. <laughs> I'm a cheat. I'm a cheat. I'm a channel. I'm a channel this information. All right. So basically, what is a crystal to, to me? Um, a crystal is an ancient tool that can be used, ra or rather, a crystal is an ancient earth element. Um, that can be used for multi purposes. Um, it is also an ancient tool, right? What I mean, what I mean by an ancient tool is more so like within one crystal, there is so much DNA, so much information in that one particular crystal. So, in any event, a crystal is a tool, is an ancient earth tool that can be used for multi-purposes, rather it's spirituality, rather it's, you know, helping with physical ailments, rather it's helping with, you know, uh, confusion of the mind, rather it's helping with balancing yourself, um, a crystal, uh, which comes from the earth, can be used to, is a tool that can be used for healing purposes. Okay, so I began getting into crystals. I think I is when I start when I moved into this apartment, okay. uh, which I think was in 2007. Okay. I believe so, 2007. Um, however, I was introduced to crystals by my, you know, my ex lover, um, you know, Isaiah or whatnot, and I used to laugh at him. I used to see him, he used to have these crystals in his pockets and all of that, and I always used to be like, why you got those rocks? Like, what is those rocks about? Remember I used to tell you, right? What's those rocks about and stuff like that? And he's like, yo, you don't know nothing about this, and I didn't. Um, however, he actually left his crystals here, um, which I actually got his amethyst, as I told you, his last. So that's basically when I started getting into crystals, and I just had this vibration, or I just had this... Um, attraction to this amethyst um, crystal, so I just started researching it, just vibing with it, meditating with it, talking to it, you know, and then I hooked up with the sister Kafunia, um, because at that time, she was, you know, educating people, not even in 2007, probably 2010 slash 11, that was like, oh, damn, we in 2017? Yeah. That was 10 years ago? Wow, yeah. I was into crystals 10 years ago. 10 years ago. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Well, 10 years ago, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was into crystals 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I was introduced to it. Who was the first crystal you started working with? Uh, amethyst, um, I believe clear quartz. Uh, not clear quartz, uh, selenite. I, I have them. I okay, have them. Yeah. Um, selenite. Um, I was in love with, um, uh, Moonstone, the Moonstone Crystal. Oh, I was in love with that. 
Um, I also was working with Soda Light. Soda Light, okay. Light uh-huh. Um, I love, and I, I believe, no, Blue Agate. Was Blue Agate one of my first crystals? I believe Blue Blue Lace Agate was one of my first crystals. And with Blue Lace Agate, I will always put it on my pineal gland when going to sleep. Okay. Okay. And um, it would like enhance. Well, I I would believe that it enhanced my psychic abilities, or rather, the dream world. Uh, blue lace agate is known to, um, you know, enhance psychic abilities, especially for Piscean. So mm -hmm. I was dealing with that whole spiritual growth and spiritual enhancement thing. So I believe blue lace agate was also one of the first ones that I dealt with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you feel an immediate connection to these crystals? Or? Because I'm a nurturing person, yes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I had to first of all I had to under I had to which is which is funny is because I didn't even know what they was about, but before knowing what they was about I was already attached to them. Right. Normally what happens is you find out what these crystals is about, then you get attached. I was the other way around. Okay. I just allow these crystals to, you know, lay on my bed and sleep with me and, you know, do all of that stuff. And then I more so, you know, as I was going through my different things in my life, I was like, let me tap into this stuff and see what this is about. Okay. So, okay. so is it, do you feel as a such thing as crystal compatibility? Are crystals for everyone? Crystals are for everyone. Again, they're ancient tools, okay. according to my definition. Depending on your situation, okay. because someone that is trying to enhance their psychic ability, they not going to take upon a grounding crystal. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. They're not going to take upon a grounding crystal. Someone that is trying to ground themselves, they're not going to deal with Moldavite, because Moldavite will have you on a high high, right? Moldavite will, it's a crystal that enhances your psychic abilities, will have you in cloud nine, or rather have you in the ethers, or rather have you in that astral plane. If you're trying to ground yourself or come down or deal with that, what is known as that 11th, 11th chakra, which comes down from the feet, you're not going to deal with Moldavite. So yes, I do believe that there is certain crystals that are compatible with, you know, you according to the situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, is there, you know, because a lot of people are getting into crystals and things like that. Uh -huh. Are there fake crystals being sold online in the streets? Yes, I believe so. Okay. I believe there is some, I believe there's fake crystals. Right. You know, I don't know who's doing it. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know who's the one selling it, bootlegging it, right. or whatever, but I do know that there are some fake crystals out there. You know, you could even, you can even, like, it's like a fake Gucci bag, you know, right. compared to like a fake, you, you know what it is. You right. get what I'm saying? It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't look the same. Right. You know, so in any event, and then when you work with it, it's like blah. You know, it, it the it doesn't feel ancient. Right. That's what I'm gonna say. It doesn't feel ancient. Right. So if you if you pretty much um, open to those ancient energies, you should be you should be able to pick up on whether or not it's a fake, or would it take more of a developed person to actually recognize that it's a fake? Can you speak up a little louder? I was saying um. Does it take for you to be open to those ancient energies or, you know, to have your, you know, uh, intuition up to detect whether or not these crystals are fake? Yeah, I think so. I believe so. So if, if one is not at that level yet, then they probably would need to uh, maybe consult with somebody who is more so professional with crystals who have never been experienced. I mean... Even people that deals with crystals don't know about crystals. Right. People, even people that deal with crystals, they be having their own issues going on. You know, they not making enough money with you know, uh, selling crystals or whatnot. So I don't. I feel like you have your own spiritual navigation in any event. So you should. You should. There's a DNA coding within us that also resonates or registers and register in each crystal that is how come i said it is a holistic and ancient tool that is 
capable of healing all illnesses. Right. But if you're blocked off, then you're not going to know that this tool that you're, you know, working with is uh, not official. Right. You get what I'm saying? You're going to be working with a crystal that's dead. Okay. Just by eating food that's dead. Right. If you dead, you're going to eat the dead food. If you alive, you ain't going to eat no canned food. Right. Indeed. I know I ain't. Right. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Now, how, necess how necessary is it to clean your crystals? Mm. Well, I would say you should clean your crystals at least every week. Okay. Or charge them, um, you so know what I mean? What are the ways to clean your crystals? Different crystals have different ways of cleansing okay. themselves. Say, for example, let's take amethyst, right? Some people will uh, soak amethyst in sea salt water, which is good. Some people will put amethyst in sunlight, but not directly into the sunlight, because what it does is it, it, it changes the color of or the magnitude of the crystal. Amethyst doesn't like to be directly in the sunlight. Right. Um, so it depends on the crystal. Like It depends on people. Right. Not everybody likes to take a bath. People just like to take a shower. Right. Not everybody like to take showers. People like to soak in the bag. Right. So it depends on the crystal itself. Just like blue lace agate. Blue lace agate, you have to run that under cold water. Blue lace agate likes water. You don't put blue lace agate in sun. Mm. Cause that you know you gotta treat these crystals like it's people or treat these these crystals like it's it's this type of entity. Right. As a living entity. Right. As a living entity. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's some of the ways that you can clean your crystals. Okay, now, what about, what, what does it mean to charge, activate, and program your crystals? What, what does that mean? What are these terms that people use about programming your crystals, charging them, or activating your crystals? What okay, you when you charge your crystals, it's basically giving it life, giving it power. Right. Right, and then it's just like when you charge your phone up. Let me get a charger. I need to pull my charger on full, full blast, so that you know this crystal can be working. You know what I mean? You want the crystal to work. You want the crystal to have energy, right? So then programming it. Once you have uh, charged the uh, crystal, you want to program it, right? You want to tell the crystal what it is that you want it to do, basically. Like mind control, like the TV, it programs certain people to act accordingly or act a certain kind of way or feel a certain kind of way, right? So, again, going back to, let's say, citrine, right? You want to program citrine to provide you with abundance, you know, heal you with the solar your solar plexus, also, you know, um, you know, healing with abundance, bringing about new beginnings things of that nature, you're not going to really, or you shouldn't really deal with citrine in a way where it's like, okay, well, sexual desires, we, although you can, but that's not its highest, highest uh, uh, peak or highest uh, strength, or it's, it's strength, because each crystal has strengths and weaknesses, just like people, right. so like amethyst, you don't, program amethyst to deal with sexual tendencies you program amethyst to deal with psychic abilities and healing okay you get what i'm saying yeah. so that is what charging means and programming okay mm -hmm. now now does charging your crystal in the sun have a different effect than charging your crystal in the moonlight because i know some people use you know, the sun sometimes for certain crystals, sometimes you use the moon. Right. And uh, how does it differ on a vibrational level? Mm, well, one is one is alpha, one is uh, beta, one is feminine, one is masculine, one is, if you want to more so get it like hot, want to get it fired up, you want to, you know, you want to charge it in the sun. If you want to you know, get it more so on a, like, just beam, nice touch and healing and nice and smooth type of charge or, or you know, or, 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 or cleanse you want to do with the moon because we're dealing with the feminine aspect when we're dealing with the moon. However, again, 
we're dealing with what type of crystals because not all crystals would like to be in the moonlight not all crystals want to be in the sunlight however holistically i've been told that um all crystals is compatible in the moonlight i'm not sure though but i've been told that it's okay especially during because you know whenever you have like this super moon um they be like oh you know charge your crystals in the super moon charge your so if we're being charged by this super moon again because crystals have dna information internally and so do we why can't the crystals benefit from this full moon same way we do right gotcha okay so you know nowadays or for a while now people are being attacked on all fronts and being psychically attacked systematically attacked etc with crystals or physical protection and blocking parasitic energy mm. Um, I would say black tourmaline. Um, I would say onyx. Um, and you want to keep them. You want to keep them on the left side, because the left side is what controls, or what, or rather, what um connects to the right brain. So you want to keep all of the protective, you know, like the the black onyx and the black tourmaline. On and you know, and you also want to do it with copper too, right? Because copper gives it that electricity. Okay. Um, so you want to keep that in your left pocket or the left side of, or even hanging over your heart chakra, um, so that it can combat this psychic attack. Because again, the left body is associated with the right brain, and the right brain is where you get psychically attacked. Those crystals that you named, mm-hmm. would you ever program them in the, the sun or, or moonlight, or would you just program them uh, for protection? No, they they're known for protection. All oh. you gotta do is put them in the sun. They yeah. they take the sun. They're yeah. black. They're carbon. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's black. It's carbon. You know, it neutralizes all negative forces. You know, or it neutralizes any type of energy. It's, it's a, and that's why you have the uh give me a second that's why you have the um the the uh copper as well to neutralize whatever information that might be that might not be so conducive to you now this book here that i just pulled up is um the dr africa book i uh This was in 2010, as you see, it's kind of crappy. Yup, I said it. It's crappy. Uh, You're lucky that's the only thing I said. Wait, hold on. I want to, there's some information here on, um, there is some information here on metals that I hope to find within uh you want me to get into this you gonna give me a second yeah yeah you can find it yeah you got time you got time all right let's see if i don't overlook this thing here okay it should be so it's somewhere here um Symptoms of surveys, no. Addiction probably is. Probably I um. What was you going to reference with you? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Hello, 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 good night. <laughs> um, what's today? Today is Monday. So the metal that is associated with Monday is silver. So tomorrow is Tuesday will be iron. Um, Wednesday is mercury, which again, this is based on, you know this information thursday is 10 friday is copper saturday is lead however metals are a form of energy they are active meaning they give energy neutral conduct energy and passive received energy metals are found uh traits which is small amounts in human bodies metals are part of the mineral kingdom they respond to light heat air water drugs electricity and music Subsequently, they are living forms of life. 
Now, copper deals with blood, liver, pancreas, eyes, ears, and emotions. So when you talk about psychic attack, those are feelings in motions, right? F you, blah, 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 emotions, feelings in motions, right? So when you wrap that copper uh, wire around this tourmaline or this black onyx, it does what? It is a form of energy. They give or conduct or neutralize it. That's the reason why I just wanted to share that information. That's it. Metals carry sound vibrations. The vibrations of metal cause an energy wave in the body. Additionally, the vibrations sustain an energy force, which is life force. Metals vibrations are specific and related to musical tones. Sound. Wow, okay, great. It's a great connection. Thank you. Now, as far as in, you kind of briefly touched on it earlier, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of people want to enhance their consciousness or tap into the astral plane. Mm -hmm. through what they call, quote-unquote, lucid dreaming or astral travel. Mm -hmm. What are some of the crystals that one can use and how would they apply it in order for it to actually work? I don't know. I, I can get the book, though. <laughs> I really don't know which, which crystals help with lucid, astral. What about lucid dreaming? I mean, lucid dreaming, you can, you can deal with blue lace agate. Okay, blue lace agate. You get what I'm saying? You can deal with um, calcinite. Um, you can deal with uh, Moldavite. You can deal with, well, Moldavite will have you astral projection for sure. I mentioned that. Um, you can deal with, um, you know, like a blue quartz. You can deal with, yeah, those are the type of crystals. Anything blue, anything, you know, uh, of higher, I guess, higher chakra colors more so will help with psychic enhancement, lucid dreaming, tapping into the spirit realm, you know, and all of that good stuff, you know, enhancing your consciousness and, you know, astral projection. But again, I don't know why people want to astral project and they ain't even got the physical thing down pat. What you want to astral project for? Where you going? <laughs> I'm trying to find out where people want to go. You, you better ground yourself here on this planet before trying to go some damn... Venus someplace and, and get lost and don't know how to act. I'm telling you. That's a, big, that's <laughs> that's a very valid point. I'm trying to tell you. A lot of people trying to escape. Escape where? Yeah. To do what? You need to <laughs> you need to escape in your internal paradise. That's that's beautiful. Yes. Now love, 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 love. Okay. Is a high level of love deprivation. Ah. You know, specifically here in North America, right? Relationships are not lasting. Friends are at odds. Mm. Family members are not even loving each other anymore. Mm -hmm. Some of the crystals that one can use to attract love and also maintain love in their household. When I say household, I also mean, you know, the body temple and mm. your apartment, house, or car, etc. Whatever you dwell in physically. Mm. How can you attract love? How can you also maintain the love? How can you attract love? What crystals? What crystals help you to attract love? Yeah. Uh, first of all, the only love is self-love. Okay. Okay, so I don't, the crystal is you. You're the crystal. That, that's the crystal that helps you to attract love. You. Remember? Um, what I mentioned to you about us being the same as these crystals or these entities or whatnot, mm -hmm. but in any event, um, you know, in order for you to attract love, you have to have self-love. That's number one. But if you are having issues with finding love or rather ha building this internal love within yourself, um, I always recommend like pastel color crystals, mainly, of course, rose quartz. Um, you have like yoni, you know, those yoni eggs. Um, that would definitely help with the attraction of, you know, this internal love. So I would first start with that internal love first and then align yourself with your align yourself with with what is coming for you. Because if you have this self love, then that love person is going to come to you. So you don't have to go out there and look. 
it's just going to come. You're just going to attract it. Mm -hmm. If you believe in universal laws or the, you know, the principles of Maya mm -hmm. in any event. Now, you had mentioned about us being a crystal. That's one of my questions. Because, you know, it's a dependency thing. So we, do you believe or do you know or feel that we have to get to a point where we're not dependent on things like crystals and actually, you know, synergize into these particular energies for to become the crystal being yourself. So so just in case you like you're in a situation you may not have access to the rose cord or so on and so forth like that. Mm -hmm. So what do you what do you do? You know what I mean? Like you have to get to a point you, imp you, you gotta improvise. If you okay. ain't got no crystal, you know what I'm saying? If you don't got no crystal, you got something else. You you didn't you we have not been reincarnated onto this planet to be blah like dumb don't know nothing we have we have a we, we have a blueprint right. we have a cosmic blueprint so and a crystal ain't really nothing actually right. <laughs> compared to what you like the the physical that is that is also known as the mineral kingdom right. you are we are gods we ain't mineral kingdom we're composed of elements and minerals, yes. So we're composed of min minerals and elements. Why should it even matter, or rather, why should we be in deprivation if we don't got it? Tapping internally will do just fine. That's, a crystal is just a tool to help you get to the next level if you need it. If you ain't got the key, then guess what? You need to jump out the window. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's it. No doubt. No okay. doubt. No doubt. And um, and, you know, touching on developing your psyche and psychic ability, mm -hmm. uh, psychic uh, hearing, psychic vision, mm -hmm. um, tele telepathy, and all these things. Crystals. Some of the crystals that can help one tap into that aspect of themselves. I think that's the same crystals that will help you with this astral projection. Okay. You know, right. yeah, the same those same crystals that will help you with the astral projection will help you with the psychic abilities and things of that nature. What also will help you with the psychic abilities is, you know, uh, not eating too much of the junk food. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Not allowing your lower side rather which is more so like the digestive system to be so clogged up right. in any event that will also help you be, with your digestive system there's, a, there's like a meme that goes around there's a meme that you know on social network where it says free up this something this and then your mind will be like this mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so it's like free up your digestive system then this will happen, and then you will be your mind will be more clear. Mm. Psychic abilities. Right. Psychic abilities is really nothing. Right. Something that we were all born with. Right. It's just rather you tapping into that sixth sense. Okay. You tap into the to the root chakra. You tap into the sacral chakra. Mm. You tap into the soul chakra. You know the heart, the throat. So why we can't tap into the six? Okay. Now, do you feel um, these crystals, because uh, you mentioned that they are ancient tools, do you feel like they came during the development stages of the earth, or did they come after, from like out of space? I feel like they came during those dinosaur ages. Mm. Okay. That kind of stuff. So they came know. pretty much, you feel they came pretty much after the planet was already in existence? the dinosaurs had to have some, you know, it was here when the earth was already created. I don't know where these crystals come from, but I know they come from the earth. And I feel like these crystals came from around the dinosaur ages. Right. You know, ancient, ancient, ancient. You know, been living many, many moons and, you know, life cycles you can't even remember. Right. You know. Right. So that's where I think they came from. I think they, can, you know, even lava. Lava could make crystals. That's you true. know, crystallized yeah. salt. Salt can make crystals. Right. You get what I'm saying? Salt, salt is crystal. It is a crystal, right? Correct. Okay. You get what I'm saying? I went to when I went to Senegal, and um, as a matter of fact, 
salt is actually gray. Mm. Salt is not white. Mm. Salt is actually gray. Mm. I seen the salt come out of the pink, the the pink, uh, pink lake, mm. the famous pink lake in Senegal. Mm. I told you about that. No. I didn't tell you about that. No, what's up with this lake? The pink lake. Lac Rose is called Lac Rose. It's in Senegal. Okay. It's a very famous pink, uh, pink la uh, lake. When you look down, even if you're flying, you look down, and the whole lake is pink. Wow. And it's full of salt. Mm. Which are crystals. Which are basically crystals. Right. So now you pull the salt, like you know, a lot of people they go they on their boats or whatever, whatever. Sometimes the brother told me that, you know, they be doing races and stuff like that. Um, I believe along the shore or whatever, and they pass the Pink Lake. You know, now it's been tampered with. But before, when I had the opportunity to see it. It was very decently pink. But they take the salt out of the, the uh, Lock Rose and they sit it on in the sun. And that's how the sun is the is what changes the color. It dries it out. Mm -hmm. So now it becomes white. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how it is exactly in all salt process, but you can see like how crystallized it is. And it's like that sulfur smell. Like it's real deal. I had brought back uh gray salt when I came. Oh, okay. I sold out. I sold out like two days. The gray salt. Mm-hmm. Right. So even with that being said, mm -hmm. our condiments mm -hmm. are the, the salt, which is very famous in, in uses with preparing foods and so on and so forth like that. These things can enhance your food as well, these crystals, in, in certain forms like salt. Mm -hmm. So they come in different forms. They come in different forms. Okay. Yeah, you could look at it that way. What about your water? Can you charge your water with crystals? Yeah, you can charge amethyst with crystal. Remember when I mention that you can charge certain crystals like water mm. or what oh well, I mean can you charge vice versa yeah, vice versa oh water. I believe so yeah with clear quartz oh, okay. um with clear quartz you can do that with clear quartz you could do that with rose quartz um because rose quartz will give off that loving vibration mm. um or whatnot clear quartz is like a multi purpose uh uh, stone or crystal or whatnot that neutralizes anything. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a charge clear quartz and you put all of your different crystals on that particular clear quartz, then it will charge it. Mm -hmm. It will charge all of the crystals that's on it. Mm -hmm. Like a wand, like you have a wand, like sometimes I do, I will have a wand and I will put all my crystals there. You can charge clear quartz. I mean, you can charge your water with clear quartz. Oh, okay. So that would be good for, you know, for some of these bottled waters that are acidic in a sense. You can kind of enhance the molecules and the energy in the water by placing the crystal in there, like clear quartz. Yeah, I'll do that. That's, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Now, would you have to let it sit for a little while? Um, would you speak it to the water with the crystal in it? I was speaking to it because you were right. speaking about vibrations, and that was, as we just said, metals carry sound wave vibrations, and you know, um, the vibration of metal cause an energy wave in the body. Mm -hmm. So the vibration of metals. So let's take out the metals and let's say the vibrations of crystal, of crystals cause an energy wave in the body. Mm -hmm. So in any event, yeah, what I would do is what I used to do is. I used to have a gallon of water and I would put my crystals on top of it mm. or rather underneath this gallon of water mm. and claim that this water has been charged. Mm. That's what I would do. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a lot of uh, chakras have been talked for, for a long time, but it seems now it's getting more and more popular amongst people and people wanting to align their chakras and remove blockages. Mm -hmm. Can crystals help with uh, chakra treatment and mm -hmm. aligning energy? Yes, crystal healing. Mm -hmm. But see on the screen, it looks like, oh no, that ain't that. That's just a picture. But anyway, um, <laughs> I thought it was crystals. Um, yes, definitely, you know, like I said, mentioned to you before, what my definition of crystals were. It's an ancient tool that can be used for multi purposes. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, rather it's spirituality, you know, uh, uh, physical ailments or whatnot. Um, if you, you know, for say for example, if you have stagnation in a particular area, you would use, say for example, pyrite. Pyrite is um, known as a money magnet, yes. However, pyrite is also used at that color gold. Gold is actually used for um, a blood, a blood disorder, or rather blood uh, dysfunction. See, uh, gold for meta- um, metabolic disorders, diabetes, intestines, bowels, and purification. So, in any event, if you have any type of stagnation within your spinal cord, because the spinal cord is what deals with, or rather relates to the different chakra levels, or rather um, you know, I don't know what they call it in like Indian terms. Prana, prana is just chi, right? Yeah, prana is like it's just, breath. Yeah, like prana is. Just, so what they call chakras in? It's different name. Vinasha. <laughs> All that crazy oh, stuff. Vinasha. <laughs> 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 but any, but any, you know, in any event, you know, just basically the different um energy levels. You know, you 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 can also look at it as. I could even break it down in terms of like the spinal cord. If this if this spinal cord thing, you know, if this is in here, you know, the coccyx. I believe the coccyx deal with the root chakra. Then you go up from the coccyx. You have what is known as it's got the the second one, but then you have the um you know the so the the thoracic, or rather the um what is it the Thorax, not the thorax. T H. It's T H. It's com- it's considered T H. But anyway, T H, and then you go up to different levels, um, of the spinal cord, which deals with, uh, the chakra levels in your body. So if you have stagnation within any type of, uh, levels there, you can place the crystals, you know, on your spinal cord according to where it's located. Okay. And then that that also helps with the kundalini arising. Yes. Okay. Thirty three vertebrates. Once the thirty three has been successfully neutralized, then it hits that pineal gland. Right. Thirty three equals six, and then you have thirty four, which is that spark. So thirty four deals with the number seven. So we're dealing with Christ. That Christ energy, um, you know, when dealing with the Kundalini ascension. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now. Now this is just my this is just my my knowledge now. Right. <laughs> People be like, oh, where she get that from? <laughs> my shit. Right. Right. Uh-huh. We, we all come with um, information in some way. Yes. Right, it's not always in the book. Yeah, it's not always in the book. I don't really read about this stuff. Right. So go ahead. Now, you know, we're coming to a close. Yes. Reiterate how important it is to, you know, align yourself with these crystals and utilize them for, you know, the awakening for some for some for some people or all people. And to help maintain one spiritual uh, hygiene. Well, again, I feel like crystals, okay, first and foremost, only use crystals if you need them. You know what I'm saying? So, the importance of a crystal within this particular time is if you are in need or you cannot go internally and receive the messages that you need or receive the guidance that you need from your own spiritual navigation you need a tool you need a boost you need fuel right because you you, the crystals are being charged by rather the sun or the moon so it's basically helping you to get through with it because these crystals have ancient information or dna coding within that will help you to do so if you even tap into it properly a lot of people get crystals and don't even know what to do you got all these crystals don't even know what to do so in any event, so in any event, I feel like the importance of it is to help you, you know, as a tool um, to go internally, or rather to help just with this.
spiritual growth, a spiritual navigation. And that's why it is very important to um, use these particular crystals at this time, especially during the time of ascension. A lot of people are, you know, getting into different things and getting into different practices. So crystals will be something that is very neutral and, you know, safe. You know, you ain't dealing with no ritualistic stuff. You're dealing with something that is very safe, you know, and very peaceful and something that you can program. So if anything goes bad, then that means because you programmed it to go that way. So be very mindful that you are the... I could say master of these crystals, right? right? So that is very important as well when dealing with crystals. All right, that's the answer. Okay, brother. All right. All right. Come yes. to a close, Ella Speaks. Ella Speaks. <laughs> yes, peace. Peace. All right.